Greetings, and welcome to episode 50. In today's episode, we'll be talking about compassion and the lack thereof in the world. <laughs> what inspired this was uh, thinking about starting a business and, and money. And I'll get into that as we go through the episode. But if we're ready, let's get started. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. So what started me thinking about compassion was uh, actually quite the opposite of compassion, empathy, things of that nature. It was uh, thinking about money and uh, uh, the, the saying just kept popping up in my head, money is the root of all evil. But it isn't. Money is not the root of all evil. There are many roots to all evil, to evil, lack of compassion, lack of empathy, greed, avarice, selfishness. Money is just the fuel. Human nature is the root. And what's funny is human nature, it, you can't even call it human nature, if it was human nature all people would think the same way. In other words, when confronted with uh, acquiring, say, vast, either vast sums of money or, or maybe just a small fortune, they would all think the same way. Me, 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 mine, 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 more, more, more. And not everybody thinks that way. So it can't be human nature. I think some people are just predisposed to want to feel like they're one-upping someone or better than someone and that's where you get the greed and the selfishness it is not about survival if it was about survival if you have even a little bit more than what you need to survive you're surviving survival is no longer an issue once you have more than you need to survive it's no longer about survival When one develops a predatory nature towards the acquisition of wealth, it becomes a, a character flaw. It's no longer you can't you can't say human nature because having been in position to acquire money by any means and deciding not to go that route, I can say that it's not human nature. If one person doesn't follow that way, it can't be human nature. That means, in other words, saying it's human nature, saying, well, it's just natural for humans to act that way, but it's not. Because money doesn't occur naturally. <laughs> so it can't be human nature. Humans are violent by nature. And not necessarily outwardly violent, go out and beat everybody up for no reason, but they're very protective of uh, their property, their territorial. They're protective of the people they love, the things they love. So it is safe to say that humans are conditionally violent. Because it actually, if you look throughout history, it takes quite a bit to stir up enough anger just to get people to set things straight. <laughs> Every time you hear about an, a revolution or a rebellion, it took years, took decades, sometimes centuries to get it to that point, even though it's been unfair the whole time. So to say that humans are violent by nature, humans are... A little bit greedy by nature humans are a little bit selfish by nature everyone wants to take care of themselves first and it is the good person or the better person that takes care of others first but that still takes a conscious effort a conscious decision 
to take care of others first. The first instinct is to take care of the self first. That means we have just enough food, I'm going to eat first. Or I want to eat first. Everyone wants to make sure they're taken care of. Me, me, me. No one's going to stand up there with, a, with, with mouths to feed and say, well, let everybody else eat and we'll take what's left over. No, everyone's going to put their hand in and try and grab what they can. And that's not necessarily greed or selfishness. Well, it's not greed, but it is selfishness. Selfishness. Me. Self. Me first. Selfish. Greedy. Just me. <laughs> Not a lot of people will say just me, but almost everyone will say me first. So some of these things maybe are not human nature, but are conditionally relevant depending on certain conditions, humans act a certain way. As it concerns money, I'm not sure because it depends on the purpose. On the purpose, well, the purpose. If it depends on the purpose of the acquisition, are you acquiring this wealth for security, so you know your family's taken care of, or that you know you're taken care of, and everything's paid for, and you want a little bit extra to go out and have fun, or are you a Acquiring this wealth just so you can rub it in everybody else's face. So you can buy the nice things and drive drive past the poor people. That makes the difference between greedy and selfish. Because if you're if your goal is to acquire wealth more than you need to survive, that's selfish. You're saying me, me, me. And that's not necessarily a bad thing for, to have goals, ambition. I'm not even saying you're not going to share it. I'm not saying that you're going to just hoard it all. What I'm saying is the initial idea to come up with this wealth uh, the the i the, the the plans you use the tactics you use to acquire this wealth someone that just wants to be secure is going to make different decisions than someone that just wants to have lots of money so they can rub it in other people's faces so they can lord it over people with less they're going to make different decisions someone that wants the power that goes with wealth is going to make vastly different choices than someone that just wants to be secure. Now the trouble comes in when you have zero compassion and zero empathy. See the person that just wants to be secure, once they get secure, and sometimes even on the way to becoming secure, they're going to share that. Because they have, even if they only have just a little bit more than they're used to, it's still more than they're used to. And they're going to share that because they feel like they're in a position to finally be able to share that. And I'm not speaking for everyone. I'm speaking for myself because I know that's how I would do it. And I'm speaking for the few that would do it that way. But then you have the ones that they're not going to spare a penny unless they're getting something out of it. And helping someone that's less fortunate than you, you're not getting anything out of that. Nobody is. That warm, fuzzy feeling don't pay the bills. That's, that's what some people will say. That's where empathy and compassion come in. You know this person has less, and maybe uh, you don't just give them a large sum of money. Maybe you go and pay their house off. Maybe you go and pay their car note. Or, you don't have to pay off the car. You don't even have to pay off the house. Just maybe just pay one payment on it. Pay the note for one month. Or the car, or the house, one of the bills, all of their bills.
the root of all evil is lack of compassion and empathy. It's not even human nature, because like I said, it's not natural for humans to act that way, because money doesn't occur in nature. <laughs> <laughs> now, the things we make money out of, the metals, the paper, the ink, those things happen in nature. We take those components and combine them and make money. But money, you can't go and pluck money off a tree or off a bush. If we did, the economy, I mean, everybody would have everything they wanted and everything, everyone would be happy and there'd be no complaints. Correct? But that's just not the way it works. So human nature, I think, because even a greedy man will have a soft spot for somebody. Even if it's not someone that's on a lower level, they're going to have compassion. They're going to have empathy, just maybe not for you. Maybe not for people that he sees or she sees as less than them. So, I guess to to fully explain it would be to say you, the root of all evil is not having compassion or empathy for those less fortunate than you. If you only have empathy and compassion for those you consider to be your equals it kind of doesn't work because it's kind of a di it, 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 I can't say it's different because compassion is compassion empathy is empathy but if you only relate to those and some people uh, like people born with money born with millions they can't relate but it doesn't, I mean, look around you. It happens all the time. It doesn't stop them from seeing and having compassion for those less fortunate. Sure, they can't empathize because they don't know what it feels like to, to have not enough or none at all. But they can have compassion enough to share or to help. So the next time somebody says, Money is the root of all evil. Say, no, it's it's just the fuel. The root of all evil is a lack of empathy and a lack of compassion. The me first attitude. And worse, worse, even worse than that is the me only attitude. Me first, I can see that. Because everybody wants something. You know what I mean? If, if, if the economy were to collapse right now and we all went ran, run into the supermarket to grab some supplies, we would be grabbing supplies for us. We wouldn't be grabbing supplies to go stand out front and hand them out to other people. We'd be grabbing supplies for us and our families. Me first. Selfish. Self-ish. Me. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. But I go into that store and I bring a couple of buddies and I post them outside as guards and I have them threaten or shoot anyone that tries to get in. That's greedy. <clears throat> I, it, there's no other way to explain it. And this all came up because I was thinking about starting a business and, uh, People can get downright, what's the word, evil <laughs> if they see you as a threat or as competition. They can get downright evil. They want in on your enterprise. And if you don't let them in on your enterprise, well, then they'll try and not let you have an enterprise. And then... You can do the safety in numbers thing and join some kind of guild or whatever they call it now. Some <laughs> what do they call it? Oh, some some association of of, of merchants or, or or grocers or 
whatever, some union. You can do that. But then now you're opening yourself up that everybody gets a slice of your pie instead of just you. <laughs> well, that's just the way things work. Well, if that's just the way things work, it just speaks volumes to the selfish, greedy aspect. I don't mind. I, I get the idea. You pay, you pay your dues. Sometimes you got to grease certain wheels to get them to turn. A little more, the more grease, the faster they turn, and all that good shit. <laughs> I get that. What I don't get is someone saying, "I want in on what you got," and if you don't let me in, I can make your life difficult. Okay, so you make my life difficult. That shows a lack of empathy and a laugh, lack of compassion. You're being greedy. That's not even selfish, that's greedy. You're saying, I already have mine, but if you want yours, I get some of yours. No. All, think about it, all the, the permits and this and that you got to buy just to be legal. I'm paying my dues. You ain't getting a piece of this. At all. At that point, it's extortion. Stealing is stealing. I couldn't fathom doing that, starting a business and then hearing about someone you know is starting a business and you go and confront them and say, hey, I want in on it. Let's have some kind of partnership. And then they say, well, I don't like that idea. I said, well, I can make life very, very difficult for you. I don't like that. I, you know, just, I couldn't do that to myself. So I can't understand how someone could do that to somebody else. I would defend myself. I'd be like, you can challenge accepted. You try and make my life more difficult. See what happens to you. <laughs> See what happens to you. And then the safety in numbers thing kicks in. Because let's, let, let's not forget that it's not what you know. It's who you know. So if you don't have sufficient numbers, nothing you do is going to come to fruition anyway. And a lot of people build those connections as they're moving up the ladder. But any businessman will tell you it's good to have those connections before you even start, before you even go and get the ladder. It's good to have those connections. Because the right connections, there might be a ladder already set up. Well, all you got to do is go over to the ladder. Start climbing it. <laughs> but then that also opens you up to having to pay dues to people that really don't even care about your business they just are going to hold it over your head well you wouldn't have it without me oh dear god really <laughs> now I don't mind that on a smaller level but everyone's gonna try and get their angle until there's nothing left for you it's all going out to everybody else and I'll be the first to admit I'm not trying to accumulate such vast wealth that I could shame Bill Gates but I'm trying to get a little bit ahead of the game get ahead so that I have what I need and then some and not and then some millions but and then some bills are paid there's rainy day money and go out and have fun money and when I say go out and have fun, if I want to take my family to Disney World, it's not a question and it won't hurt the bank at all. That's what I'm talking about. But within that, <coughs> excuse me, I'm not going to lose sight of the fact that there are those less fortunate than me. Even right here where I'm at, at damn near the bottom, just above the poverty level, there are still those less fortunate than me. And I understand that. And it's not a matter of not wanting to help. It's a matter of wanting to help in a certain way. And in order to help in the way that I would like to, I have to have enough money to do that. 
because a couple of bucks, they say, oh, they're just going to buy drugs. Well, yeah, they're just going to buy drugs. You only gave them just enough to go buy drugs. <laughs> you want them to eat, go buy them a meal. Don't give them the money. Go buy them a meal. Well, I don't have that kind of money to go buy them a meal. I've only got a couple of bucks. <laughs> well, he just went and bought a beer with it because you only gave him a couple of bucks. But granted, if you'd have given him 50 or 100, he'd have went and got a hotel room and he would have went and got beer or whatever his little poison or device is. So, either way. But in my opinion, helping someone less fortunate than me would be a matter of go get them a clean suit of clothes. And maybe not a suit, but, you know, clean clothes. A clean outfit. Get them a shower. Maybe a shave and a haircut. And get them, or make it so they can get to a job interview. And then make it so they can get to a job after that. That's my idea of helping. But to get to that point, I'd have to have money. I would start a charity that that's what they did. Take a person who genuinely want genuinely wants to get off of the street and get them off of the street and help fund the beginning of that not a hand out but a hand up each dollar spent will be accounted for well you can't force people to spend money in a certain way and blah, blah, that's not fair I they're not gonna get to spend the money the money will be spent for them I'd put them up in an apartment, but the rent will be paid. They won't see a thin dime except for whatever they make in the job they go get. And then for the first three months, they wouldn't have to pay their bills. The bills would be paid until they can get established in their job, and then they can start paying their bills. Instead of treating the symptoms with a couple of bucks, cure the fucking disease and get these people off the street. <laughs> That's compassion. That's empathy. That's what I would do if I had more than I needed to, 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 to live. And when I say more than I need, I've got myself, my wife, and two children to look after. So... It's not just more than I need, it's more than we need. But there's a lot of people that, that won't think that way. Well, why is it my responsibility? It's not a responsibility. It's, well, it kind of, it kind of is a responsibility. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link. It almost makes you the weak link by, not, or by thinking you don't have to help. Imagine if a link in a chain decided I, it didn't have to help and just went slack. The whole chain would go slack. And that's what it is. We are one species living on a planet, and every link in the chain wants to go off and do its own thing. And everybody says, ah, that's not my responsibility. How is the chain supposed to pull us in the right direction if everybody's going in their own direction? So the homeless person isn't the weak link. Homeless person may be at the end of the chain, but they're not the weak link. Think about that for a minute. Now think about it being our responsibility to not give handouts like we do. To see them on the corner or at the off-ramp or on the on-ramp. And you, and you give them handouts. How about a hand up? Go buy him some clothes. You're not giving them cash. You're giving them a suit of clothes, a pair of pants, shirt, shoes. You tell them, hey, come with me. We're going to get you a haircut and a shower. Now come with me over here. We're going to get you this cheap apartment. Now you're off the street. And what I've seen is a lot of them are, they're addicted to one thing or another. And that just compounds the fact that they're homeless because they've lost their self-respect and they've lost their dignity and then the drugs compound it 
and us being one of the few nations left that treats addiction as oh that's your just your own personal problem it's just a character flaw addiction is not a character flaw addiction is a disease to be overcome not a character flaw that you can just stop doing someone going around talking shit to everybody being mean that's a character flaw you can decide to not do that anymore a chemical addiction is not unlike a disease and if you treated it as such whew, it would go away and now this person has hope and now this person has a reason to go to work every day and now this reason this this person is secure in where he's at and now boom no more hand up he's he's there he's up move on to the next one see I have ideas I have empathy I have compassion and I'm broke and I still can come up with these ideas I just don't have the money to push these ideas forward and make them a thing and see that's why I believe human nature real human nature it's natural for humans to help one another that's what we're supposed to do you see people in a community or a small town they all help one another someone falls on hard times everybody chips in to keep that guy afloat or that lady afloat or that family afloat and then someone else falls on hard times same goes over to there how come we can't do that as a country how come we can't do that as a planet someone falls on hard times you help them you help hold them up you help get them the help they need whatever it is whether it's detox and counseling whether it's uh, money for bills food you name it it is human nature to help because greed stems from what do you call it the acquisition of wealth and not wealth in its in the sense that I need a little bit more than I need just for my own security but wealth in the sense that I'm gonna lord it over other people because it gives me this sense of power it gives me this sense of being better than you that is when it becomes a bad thing when it instills in a person that oh you're better than everybody now look at the nice things you can buy now you can rub that in their face now now the person that acquires their wealth and it instantly becomes helpful that I mean how can you say money is the root of all evil when this person acquired his wealth and still set out to help as opposed to the person that acquired their wealth and was like well piss off everybody I got mine <coughs> So yeah, the next time you're worried about the government not helping and this and that and the other, how much did you do? How helpful were you? I've given plenty of money to homeless people, but that's what struck me. I'm not doing this person any service because, oh, they're just going to go spend it on drugs. It's not an option for them. It's not even a choice that's why they're out there that's why they ended up homeless in the first place so it's not even an option get them back on their feet sometimes that's gonna mean getting them off that habit treat that habit instead of treating it like a character flaw like I said treat it like it's a uh, a disease and you'll take care of it compassion empathy understanding where they're coming from and I granted some people have never been addicted to anything so they don't they can't fathom where that person is coming from but those of us that have been addicted to something at one point in time I don't care if it's just cigarettes 
If you've been addicted to something and tried to quit, you know that it's not just a character flaw. Empathy and compassion. It is the lack thereof that is the root of all evil. Not money. Money is just a fuel. And even that is conditional. It doesn't inspire everybody to be greedy. It only inspires some people to be greedy. Don't ever forget that. Anyway, we're getting on to the 30 minute mark and we're going to go ahead and call this episode. <laughs> Not bad. I mean, I just spur of the moment. I mean, I was trying to think up an episode for today and just poof hit me out of the blue. But, uh, yeah, if you like today's episode, please click the like button if you've enjoyed it. And uh, you can favorite it if you want to. But if you'd like to come back and get more information, or you just like the sound of my voice, please hit the subscribe button. But until next time, you hang in there. <laughs>